Welcome back to these videos about preparing the Rivage PM systems for use at a live or broadcast event. We've looked at system config, patch and names, and user preferences. Now we're going to work through custom fader layers, user defined knobs, and keys. Each fader bay can handle up to 30 custom fader layers while each Rivage PM console has several banks of user-defined keys and knobs with color coding and or labels. Only the CSR3 doesn't include LCD panels to show the functions of the user-defined keys. So let's find out how to get them all set up. Open the setup screen and you'll find the custom fader button in the middle row. Here you can construct all your custom fader layers. Up to 30 layers for each fader bay. It's important to note a difference here with Yamaha CL and QL consoles. With CL and QL the fader banks had only one or two custom layers and they were stored in the scene memories. So you had to either recall save them or copy and paste to multiple scenes. With Rivage PM systems, you get a much larger number of layers, but they're stored separately from the scenes. They get stored in the user setup library. However, if you want a different layer with each scene, you can simply choose which layer appears in which fader bank for each scene. So let's get populating the layers. At the top left, choose which la fader bay to work on, left, center, right, or master. Master actually has only one selection. If you're not using the main stereo A and B buses, you can select something else, such as Q level or a specific mix bus or an important input channel. For LC and R, you have a selection of 30 layers each, 1A to 1F, then 2A up to 5F. Select a layer and then choose any channel to appear on any fader. Inputs, mix, matrix, master, Q, monitor, or DCA. Mix and match as you choose. If you have stereo paired channels, you only need to assign one side and both left and right will be controllable from the channel strip. That way you can gather 12 stereo channels on the same layer. Select the member channels on the screen or use set by cell, allowing you to navigate through the fader layers, selecting channels as you go. Of course, that only works if the cell link preference is set to link channel strips with screen. Remember, we looked at that in the previous video. If you want to reorder a layer, there are move and insert action buttons at the bottom right of the screen. If you'd like the same fader layer to be available on another fader bank, use the copy and paste buttons at the bottom left. So you can quickly get set up with a fader layout you are happy with. And remember, when you store a scene memory, the current fader bank selection is stored with it. So Different layers can be recalled with different scenes, if you like. Unless you recall safe them. Now that's done, let's look at the user-defined knobs. In this menu, you can select different parameters to access from the four user-defined knobs above the user-defined keys on CSR10 and CSDR7 consoles. These are accessible on CSR5 and CSR3 via the user-defined knob on the right side of the screens. There are four knobs with four banks, so 16 functions in total. 
By default, they control the brightness of the screens, panels and lamps, but there are many other available functions, such as input gain for a specific channel or selected channel, any mix send, pan, dynamics, delay, EQ parameters, Q and monitor levels, oscillator, and even controls for the Dan Dugan Auto Mixer. Remember, these settings can be stored in the user setup library, so your colleagues could use different assignments than you. And whatever you choose, you can customize the label. Touch the label button on the right, and now you can choose the color, title, and text. On Rivage PM10 and PM7, you can use three lines of text, though if you use five letters or less on just one line, it will use a bigger font for you. These larger consoles use more LCD screens for their user-defined functions. Also in this menu, you can select up to five functions to assign to the channel strip encoders. That's the row of encoders above each fader. On Rivage PM10 and PM7, this is a dedicated row with five assignable functions. On Rivage PM5 and PM3, the row has shared functions with the screen. So the encoder function is selected by using the assign key to the right of each screen. Anyway, feel free to choose your five preferred functions, such as analog gain, digital gain, pan, stereo or surround, high pass filter, low pass filter, dynamics, delay, silk texture, and any mix or matrix send. These will then be quick to access from the control surface, when multiple channels can be adjusted in quick succession. The user-defined keys are just as easy to set up. Each Rivage PM console has four banks of 12 keys. PM10 and PM7 consoles have four special quick reaction keys right by the armrest, suitable for frequently repeated tasks such as next scene recall or effect tap tempo, for example. Rivage PM5 consoles have the same number of user-defined keys, just laid out in a different configuration. Rivage PM3 shows two banks of keys side by side, so you can access 24 functions at the same time. Plus it has two additional keys, E1 and E2, in between the fader bays for easier access mid-show. All consoles can be programmed in the same way, in the setup screen, user-defined keys. There's one tab for each bank of keys, plus a label button. First, select the key you wish to edit, then select the function. You'll see that bank B by default is used for all the mute group masters, while banks C and D are blank, but of course they are all customizable. Let's look at some of the more useful options. Firstly, alternate function. This provides more versatility to the other knobs and switches on the console, so it's a really useful one. Choose whether you want the switch to latch or not. Pressing it will allow a quick toggle between analog gain and digital gain on the channel strip encoders, for example. Or it will access additional parameters on the screen encoders. When the encoders are assigned to HPF or LPF, dynamics, delays, silk or sends, activating the alternate function while pushing the encoder will switch these parameters on or off. And when the encoders are used for a send function, rotating them will 
switch between pre or post. Also, the other Q bus, A or B, will be accessible with the ALT function. Set by cell is another useful set of functions, handy for speedy show programming. Use it to set a function for many channels quickly, such as plus 48 volts, phase, direct out to stereo, or gain compensation. Hold the user define key down and use the channel cell buttons to control the function. So many useful Q, monitor, talkback and oscillator functions can be added to these keys too, many of which we'll talk about in another video soon. Then there are of course quick scene memory recall buttons and event list control, MIDI message and GPI triggering. The recorder function of the USB drive can be controlled easily for recording or playback. Surround panning and bus assignment can be adjusted easily. And of course, tap tempo is a favorite use of the user defined keys. Four different tempos can be assigned to different effect units. When bookmark or home options are selected for the user defined keys, they will change what you see on the console screens to your favorite views. I'll tell you how to use them in the next video, which will be all about console navigation. How to quickly move about to find what you need fast and feel right at home with all the information and controls around you. I'll be back soon.